Oh man, I can't wait for the new episode of My Hero! The UA Sports Festival. I'm sorry, Izuku. Deku, you bastard! Young man, you too can become a hero. <laughs> One week later. Oh man, I can't wait for this new episode of My Hero Academia. Internships. I'm sorry, Izuku. You bastard! You too can become a hero. <laughs> Run. Yes, I can't wait for this new episode of My Hero Academia. Stay. Bastard. Become a hero. <laughs> Is it just me or am I starting to notice a pattern here? <laughs> Internet. Welcome to Film Theory, the show that always sweats the small stuff. Speaking of sweat, you know what I hate? Katsuki Bakugo, the sandy-haired, hyper-aggressive bully from My Hero Academia. I know, I know, I get it. He's learning to accept others and blah, 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 blah. But seriously, dude, get over yourself. I don't need any of your protection, damn it! It's one thing to be stubborn and cocky, but jeez, dial it back once in a while. I just want to say... I'm gonna win. But even I have to admit that, despite his obnoxious personality, he has got himself one heck of a fascinating superpower. While quirks in the Hero Academia universe can range from godlike to totally useless, when Bakugo spun the wheel, he definitely landed closer to the godly end of the scale. If you don't know the show, let me tell ya, he's got himself the power to produce massive explosions. But the way that he activates that power, like Bakugo himself, is, um, less than pleasant. You see, Bakugo's quirk isn't just making things magically explode. He's no Yoshikage Kira. Instead, Bakugo's explosions are a byproduct of his actual quirk, which is that he sweats nitroglycerin. Or, to be more specific, a substance very similar to nitroglycerin, which he can detonate at will. Since you're such a stalker, by now you probably know how my quirk explosion works. I secrete nitroglycerin-like sweat from my hands and make it blow up. Essentially, the sweatier he gets, the bigger his explosions are. And over the course of the series, we've seen Bakugo make some pretty darn big, earth-shattering kabooms. Even without his special grenade gloves that store up his, uh, fluids to create bigger blasts. So of course, all this raises the obvious question. How much would Bakugo have to sweat to create blasts as big and powerful as he does? Well, you ought to know by now that that's the exact sort of insane question that I answer on this channel. So roll on some Old Spice and make sure that you're wearing an undershirt. It's gland problem. Since today, we're literally working up a sweat to prove how hot under the collar this anime character gets. And spoiler alert, He's producing more sweat daily than the gaming room at your local anime convention. Oh yeah. It's that bad. To begin, we're told that Bakugo's sweat is basically identical to nitroglycerin, and since science knows a lot about how much nitroglycerin expands when it explodes, by measuring a given explosion from the anime, we can work out pretty easily exactly how sweaty Bakugo would have to get to produce it. Now, one thing I'm not gonna do is look at what Bakugo can do in his hero costume, since those grenade gauntlets of his are designed to store his sweat over time, thus making their explosive power more based on how long he's been wearing them, as opposed to how much he's actually sweating. That said, the newest season of the anime has given us a great benchmark. In Season 3, Episode 3, we're given a quirk training montage, where each character is trying to push their quirks to the limit in order to expand their powers. We're expressly told that Bakugo is plunging his hands into boiling water to expand his sweat glands, then creating chain explosions to increase the scale of his banging attacks. So, not only are these visually the largest fireballs that he produces in the series, we also know that Bakugo 
Bakugo is intentionally pushing himself to his limits here to unleash his full strength, both in terms of explosion size as well as how fast he's making those explosions happen. At first, I thought I could just measure the blast using Bakugo himself as the measuring stick, since he's right there and we know that his cannon height is exactly 172 centimeters based on the character stat cards that pop up between commercial breaks. However, I wanted to be as precise as possible, which, when it comes to Bakugo, is a bit of an issue. He has that Super Saiyan perm thing going on that makes it hard to figure out how exactly his height's being measured, and he almost never stands up straight. Lucky for us though, Bakugo is not the only measuring stick that we have at our disposal here. He's standing next to an oil drum, the exact same kind of oil drum that his fellow classmate Todoroki is using for his training. And with his good posture and flat haircut, this icy hot honor student makes for a much better measuring stick. We know that from heel to head, Todoroki stands at 176 centimeters tall. That means, using his height in this manga profile picture as a baseline, we can determine his pupillary distance, or the distance between the centers of the pupils of his eyes, a measurement that's often taken by optometrists during eye appointments. On average, male pupillary distances are between 5.3 centimeters and 7.7 centimeters, and Todoroki's pupils are exactly 7.62 centimeters apart, so it falls right in that range. This measurement can then be translated over to the training montage to measure the barrel from side to side in this shot, which gives us a barrel diameter of 79.88 centimeters. Finally, we can apply those barrel measurements to the one standing next to Bakugo to measure the diameter of the fireball. And here's where we run into one other snag. You see, we're never actually shown the full scale of the fireball that Bakugo creates, despite it being a distant shot that we can clearly tell goes above the tree line. So we're just gonna have to settle for measuring the part of the fireball that we can actually see in this flat-on shot. But trust me, even that is more than enough. If we cut a chunk off the fireball starting at the widest point before it goes past the edge of the screen, we get a dome that's 2,545 centimeters across by 716 centimeters tall. Plugging those numbers into this formula, which measures the volumes of spherical caps, gives us a total volume of 2,428.2 cubic meters, or 2,428,207 liters of exploding gas. That certainly sounds like a lot, but to truly understand what that means, let's dig a little deeper. Doing a little research, we know that when it explodes, nitroglycerin expands to a little over 1,200 times the volume of its original liquid form. So all we have to do is divide the volume of the explosion by 1,200 to see just how much sweat Bakugo would need to produce it, leaving us with a final grand total of a whopping 2,023 and a half liters of sweat. To put that in perspective, an average human produces between 0.8 and 1.4 liters of sweat during an hour of exercise. Or, for a fairer point of comparison, since Bakugo's using hot water to open up his sweat glands, an average person produces just one liter of sweat after 15 minutes in a steam room. Bakugo is sweating at least 2,000 times that amount in the five seconds between explosions in this scene. And remember, that's just part of the fireball. The whole thing is three to four times the size of what we can actually measure, which means that Bakugo is probably producing closer to 6,000 liters of sweat in five seconds from just the palms of his hands. That's about 150 times the total volume of liquid contained in the average human body. And if a real person were truly sweating that much liquid, they'd shrivel up and die like a prune in a fraction of a second. But let's just ignore that problem for a moment and assume that Bakugo's quirk somehow compensates for this rapid fluid loss by other means, the same way it prevents his explosions from blowing his hands off. I mean, after all, this is a universe where a guy's whole body can be made out of teleporting mist or a guy's face can be made out of flame, or a guy can have teeth that turn into magically long blades. So who's to say what is and isn't possible with these darn quirks? Assuming that he wouldn't die from it in terms of liters per second, Bakugo is sweating over a million times faster than the average human being. Let that sink in for a minute. He is sweating a million times faster than you. If you were to stand with that barrel in an Olympic swimming pool, he would be able to fill the entire thing with his sweat in 34 minutes and 43 seconds. Every 30 minutes, he's sweating the amount of an Olympic swimming pool. Ugh, gross. Hey! Sweating is the act 
of a healthy body. Of course, Bakugo isn't gonna spend all day in sauna conditions, but even at regular temperatures, he'd be sweating buckets on a daily basis. Literally sweating buckets. On an average day, a regular person will produce between 500 and 700 milliliters of sweat. At a million times that rate, Bakugo would be sweating between 5 and 700,000 liters every single day. Which, let's be honest, would probably mean he'd need to drink a little bit more than 8 glasses of water per day to stay hydrated. And it would definitely mean that I wouldn't want to sit anywhere near him in class or on a bus. Clearly, Bakugo is going in the completely wrong direction when he chose his hero name. King Explosion Murder. I'm gonna say that one's a little too violent. Nah, <laughs> forget all that. With palms as sweaty as yours, buddy, you're better off calling yourself the Swamp Thing. But hey, that's just a theory. A film theory. And cut. One, two, three, fuck it.